drain openers, which is highly acidic, uh, aerosol sprays, aerosol cans, what to do with it? Oh, okay, well, they point this to EPA and, and um, uh, what was the other one? Environmental Protection Agency and uh, I can't think of the other agency that's it's equivalent with the environment. Mm -hmm. And we sat down, talked, this is what we're looking to do. And okay, well, we'll get you some containers out to put different things in. And we, we tried our best to do what we could. If we saw it in the open, we'd pick it up, put it on the side. Well, we waited a week, called them up. We never did get our containers. Oh, we dropped them off in the wrong place. We'll have a truck by. Well, by the time the second call got placed, and before we got our containers, one of the EPA officials had passed. Mm -hmm. Well, with our pile of trash, as long as it was, it started to sprinkle one day. And our paint mixing system that applies all the tint to the paint was in the debris. Well, with the rain, it had gotten into the mixer and it started overflowing mm -hmm. and rolling out down the curb. Well, that put a, a screeching halt. If you move one more item, you'll be fine. Look, buddy, we tried everything possible. We asked for containers. We tried to do it right. Here's the cards of the people we spoke to. You know, this is on y'all, not us. <laughs> so they shut us down. They called officials in Baton Rouge. They got on the phone with the owner. They told the owner, look, uh, y'all are lying that y'all didn't talk to nobody. Ma'am, this is the person we talked to. Well, they wouldn't have told you to push it out to the curb. We, we, we supply y'all with containers. We've tried to ask for containers. We, we've got numerous phone calls in. They brought them to the wrong location. We can't sit here, you know, twiddling our thumbs waiting on y'all. You know, this is a stack that we run across that we're saving, and it was legit. We had another little pile set off to the side that wouldn't get damaged or leak. And at that point in time, we were 95% cleaned out mm -hmm. as far as the main floor. They shut us down, couldn't move another thing. Uh, they come in, masks, white suits, body suits, rubber gloves, face shields, rubber boots. They had a decon area when they'd leave out the store. Now here we are working in shorts, boots, open <coughs> open face, you know, uh, mud up to our elbows, and we working in it every day for a couple months. And here they come, shut us down, and before they would move one from inside the building to out, they had to go stand in a swimming pool, let pour water on them, kind of decontaminate them so to speak, and at that point in time, we didn't finish our warehouse area, and they come in, shut us down completely, vacuum trucks, sucked up the mud, sucked up, because of the oil that was yeah. in the mud, sucked everything up, cleaned it out, and uh, basically finished the job for us. <laughs> Good. You know, uh, what was so funny is to watch the process of that agency one container would have to go through three or four different people to touch it. The first person to pick it up, okay, this is an oil-based solvent, hand it to the next person. Okay, it contains blah, 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 blah. Uh, log this down, they'd write it down, hand it to another person that would put it into a container. You know, here we are, we're tossing it one and two at a time into the containers once we were moving it around. Here they are setting it very gingerly down. You know, once they got the container half full, they'd wrap up the bag, seal it, and put a lid on it. You know, it's half just, full. It, five people had to handle it before it got into the container. Ridiculous. <laughs> this is Scott going to help you. I uh, kind of know that. Oh, right. Well, yeah, they said it was all the way to Misha. Uh, so it's just 
it, it was it was crazy. Uh, I had pulled hoping that it would, this was a little bit higher ground than from where I lived. I lived six miles from here. Mm -hmm. I brought one of the vehicles I couldn't drive, parked it in the back, and we, we, we had borrowed a forklift from uh, one of the crews that were helping clean up mobile mm -hmm. and to move the car since it was flooded here. We pulled the rest of the door down, got in here. They didn't bring big enough equipment to move the large item. But before we could even move the car out, they had four guys holding a big plastic sheet. Now, everything around this entire area was covered with the same water, same oil, and same mud. But before we could move the car to the parking lot next door, they held plastic sheeting up underneath and walked with the forklift. Once it was put down in place, they encapsulated it in plastic like it was contaminated. <laughs> it just crazy things that went on that you wouldn't normally see anywhere else. It doesn't make any sense. So how has the infrastructure come back since? Slowly but surely it's improving. Uh, still no hospital. Mm -hmm. uh, and how many people were living in the area? Roughly 60,000, 65,000. If I had to guess today, they say we're back at maybe three quarter uh, population than we were previous. On my best guess, we still have a lot of construction crews down here. Mm -hmm. uh, temporary crews doing slab removal, a lot of the road home property mm -hmm. maintenance for cutting grass, they're staying down here. A lot of BP people now living here. Uh, things like that, building the levee systems, they got crews living down that. here. Mm -hmm. So it, it's just, I'd have to say on a good day, if we're at 50 to 60 percent, that would be at most. Wow. Now, and of course, for a local business like we are, trying to share the same amount of market area mm -hmm. with half to maybe 60 percent of the population back, gets kind of rough. Yeah, it's right. it hits your bottom line quick. We are probably right at four to five people shy than we would normally staff prior mm -hmm. to the store. We, we were hoping after the storm, we, we chose this is the best thing to do to come back. It would be very beneficial being in this line of business to help with the homes and rebuilding process that we thought our good amount of business would last for the first four to five years. That was cut in half of what we projected before the economy took a dump only half the people coming back than what it was. So it's just we, we kind of misjudged our numbers, so to speak, for what we have invested back, but not we, the owner has invested back into the store. Yeah. Well, and how does this, I mean, how do you handle this I mean, emotionally? I mean, I, I'm just, you know, I've just been here for a couple of days and I'm, I'm devastated. It, it's, it's been rough and, and a lot, I, I went through a separation after the storm. You know, and a lot of people I know of just couldn't take the pressure, take take the the everyday plunge to get back and strive and do what, what's best for yourself as well as your family mm -hmm. to to provide for them as well as to rebuild on top of that. You still got to go to work. You still.